What's going on, guys? For those of you that are tuning in later on, thanks for checking out my channel. My name is Neeb. This is Aromatics, and this is Lily. Today, we're going to be doing an unboxing for four Tiziana Terenzi fragrances. If you're hopping in, please put your fragrance of the day. Today, I wore, let's see, which one did I wear today? Uh, I wore Kingsgate Fragrances, their version of Haltane from Parfums de Marly. So Haltane is like this Baccarat Rouge DNA with some oud. So Parfums de Marly Funk and Baccarat Rouge. It kind of reminds me of a lot of Initio's oud for greatness. What's going on, y'all? What's going on, Amni? Thank you, thank you. Please put your sense of the days. Latafa Al-Azal, that's what's up. Joel, I put this sucker on the other day, and man, I'm pretty impressed. This is a really, really nice. This is a nice freshie. I just wish it lasted a bit more than like five hours, four hours, four and a half to five hours. The one thing that I will say is that once I pop out this review, uh, I feel like a lot of people are going to feel as though this doesn't last because of the transitions. What's up, Phoenix? Thanks for tuning in. And the reason I say that is that this fragrance, even though it's sub 50, it does have some transition phases. A lot of them, actually. Uh, first, it starts off kind of fresh, minty, sparkly, and then it dries down into like a citrusy almost woody like vetiver almost i don't know if there's a vetiver note in there and then it dries down into like this generic tonka base so i feel like once it reaches that generic tonka base people are gonna say essentially it's gone but um so basically all i've got these four fragrances that have been sitting around and i'm tired of looking at them figured let's go live and let's crack these open so i can put them in the in the uh in the display i have not tried paris corner campfire I've actually got by the fireplace on the way. I only had a decant of it. So if I'm going to pick that one up, I want to wait till I pick up the original first. So you're saying it's one-to-one -one with Baby Cat. Are you talking about Latafa's Maher or just the dry down? Let us know, Phoenix. All right. So first fragrance we're going to start with. Before I start this off, I would love to get this on a second slideshow so we can go through the notes together and see what's up man uh, i purchased all these with my own money so there's no filtering if it smells like butthole that's what i'm gonna say so let's see and even if they did send it to me i would say the same thing but let's see from the queen's new york womo signature that's what's up i love womo the womo line womo signature is probably my least favorite i'm gonna be honest uh, the leather is very dense still smells really nice that entire line is really good. The Salvatore Ferragamo Womo is really nice. Um, oh, okay. I got you, Phoenix. So let's see Phoenix's comment here. It says, Center of the day is Vanna Gloria Labor Laboratorio Olfactivo, which is a one-to-one -one YSL baby cat. It's funny you say that because last night I just picked up the sixth place uh, Velours, or is it something like that, by YSL? And I was looking to get baby cat, but baby cat is harder to find. And let me address this one last question before we move on. It says, Sarah, uh, don't worry about it. Have you tried our moth club day and we intense? And how do you like it? Of course I have, bro. Um, I like it. There are different variations. A lot of people are going to get caught up in the minor differences. There are some differences, although they might be minor. The EDT, excuse me, the EDT is the harshest of them all. Uh, it's very synthetic. I would just highly suggest stay away from the EDT just because uh, it's not really that much of a mass pleaser. It's, uh, although it might be loud or strong, it's brash. You don't want that. You don't want that impression. The EDP is a better alternative. And then you have the special, the limited edition Parfum. That's the best one to date. But between the EDP and the limited edition Parfum, I would say it's about a 20, not even 20% difference. They're minor differences. So but if you're going to do it, do it right. Get it right off the bat, the limited edition Parfum. Don't waste your time and money in researching which one is whatever. Even if it's 30 bucks, man, it's only $15 more. Wait, get the, the best one. You know, uh, Usually people who, who cheap out end up paying double, right? Because you end up buying the one and then you're like, oh, damn it. I really don't like this. It is screechy. And then you end up buying the other one too. So you don't want to do that. Just start off right. All right, let's see. New tab. And what clones? Oh, man, I've got a list for this Phoenix. So uh, my my channel's fairly new. All right. So we're only about seven months in or eight months into the channel. And I've got blueprints. I've even got Excel spreadsheets. I've got I've got big plans for this channel, dupes, clones, originals, all that. 
where I'm going to list like I'll have a directory of probably over like 300 fragrances and their clones and stuff like that. This will be useful tips for everybody that I will probably link in all of the descriptions so people can go in and just be like, you know, control F, you find the fragrance you want and it'll I'll just have this entire spreadsheet. Mind you, I'm one person working on this list that's going to be 300 plus fragrances. So all in time. With that being said, the fragrances that outperform the OG, that's a list that I'm compiling now. And because I'm picking up so many at once, it's constantly growing. So I don't want to give you like, I'll give you one right now, Luxador, Loyal Agar, that outperforms Leighton, Parfums de Marly. Luxador, Loyal Agar destroys Leighton's performance. I, I don't even, it just destroys it. But anyway, um, so big things coming just all in time, right? I do have a career as well. So this is like, this is my hobby. I love doing this. So I'm trying to balance the best of both worlds. I do work on this even when I'm at work. So I love this stuff. But anyway, um, let's see. Any more questions before I move on? Any recommendations? Let's see. Hold on one second. Let me pull this up. Fragrantica. I'll address some of these questions because that's I'm here for. Okay. Uh, any, any recommendations for good coffee notes or coffee fragrances? My next venture into the note is Mocha Wood. I'm cheating because it has tobacco in it, which is my number one note. Rashad, I'm going to be honest with you, man, and tell you that the best coffee fragrance, which surprisingly doesn't even come from a niche brand, is from the Dua brand, man. Cafe de Dua. Put your stigmas aside and all that stuff. Cafe de Dua is the most realistic coffee fragrance. If you're looking for a true coffee fragrance, I can guarantee you will like Cafe de Dua. I'm not even playing around. Like I will guarantee you will enjoy that one. The closest thing that I've ever smelled to an actual coffee fragrance. And I'm sure a lot of people can uh, attest to that. What's up, Tom? Thanks for tuning in, bud. I have Loyal Agar. Here he goes. A testimony from John Boy. And it's beast. It is absolute beast mode. I'm talking, John, this has lasted on my skin, bro. No joke for 12 hours on my skin. I showered, I scrubbed, and I swear to God, it was still there. What's going on, Hez? Uh, Joel says that Ted Lapidus Black Soul Imperial, dark coffee scent. It's probably a good one, but Cafe de Dua, I would highly suggest that one. There's only about six or seven that I really, like, I love from Dua out of, I bought like over 70 fragrances, right? So six to seven is really not much. Uh, you know, it's maybe 10% if that. Uh, so yeah, that's one of them. Definitely one of them. All right, let's get into the first fragrance, y'all. And I'll, I'll catch back up with you guys. And I have heard of the kerosene from that indie niche brand that does that coffee phoenix. Um, all right, let's check it out, y'all. Let's start with the first fragrance. This one is going to be, I'm not going to waste time, y'all. I'm just going to tell you straight up. This is Lily Pur or Lily Pure. This is from Tiziana Terenzi, not Tiziana Terenzi. And um, when, or Tiziana, I don't know how people pronounce <laughs> I pronounce it Tiziana Terenzi because that's how it is. All right. So the back, really nice. It's cute presentation. I've been going to Nemus, Neiman Marcus for a long, long time. I've been taking a look at their selections and I really wasn't a fan, you know, right away of Tiziana Terenzi. It reminds me cool. of like the effect I had on some other niche brands, kind of like a mwaj. At first I smell them like whatever, but then I came back to some of these and I really gave them a chance and I was like, okay, these are actually really nice. So inside the boxes, whenever you buy a Tiziana Terenzi, you're going to get little pamphlets. It's nice informational uh, facts about their brand, the perfumers, extrait de parfums. It'll also give you their catalog of their other fragrances. So it's pretty useful. I like it. I like the attention to detail and little stuff like that. And then inside the box, you have a travel cap kind of like what Nasamato does. So this is what the cap looks like. If you're going to travel and you don't have the space to take that entire thing, you could just straight up cap it. Or if you don't like that cap, whatever. So Lily Pure, let's see. Lily Pure. Lily Pure. This is amber aromatic. It got a 3.83. So I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm a victim of this, right? So I'll open Fragrantica. I'll be like, let's see what people have to say. If it doesn't rate... A four, I'm immediately like, I'm not even going to bother buy it. This is what I'm talking about, like blind buying, right? And the problem with that is there's so many fragrances that you might end up loving that probably gets like a 3.5. And it's happened to me so many times. So I kind of started saying, you know what? 
not many people like the same notes that I'm going to like. I don't care about the rating anymore. Let me just check out the notes. If I like the notes, if I like some of these combinations and they're similar to other fragrances I like, I'll pull the trigger and give it a shot, whatever. So I bought this on fragrancebuy.ca. I think it was a little over 120 or 140. So let's take a look. Some of the notes, star anise, wormwood, olibanum, lemon. So I love star anise. I love the pepper. I love cinnamon. Carnation is probably the only note that I really don't like. I really don't like it. Carnation always gives me like this very old school fragrance vibe. Tobacco, benzoin. So you see we have these uh, resins at the top, resin at the base. We've got amber. Cashmere wood is going to make this nice and fancy smelling. And the musk is also going to do this same thing. It's like buffers and birch. So let's see. It says that this is getting some comparisons to fragrances that I don't really I'm not familiar with. The only one that I'm familiar with is probably dark amber and ginger. And then there's this Mercedes Benz. So these are the things that I look at, right? And I don't really care too much for what people say. Sometimes people just shit on a fragrance if they don't enjoy it. And that's not cool. So let's see. Let's get this on. I kind of want to spray this on skin, to be honest. So yeah, let me spray this on skin just because it's not fair. So I'm going to do one fragrance here, another one here. And then I've got, you know, the other spots. So let's check it out. Here we go. All right, Lily Pure. So star anise and some resins is what I should get right away. Okay, yes, I definitely get a lot of Sichuan pepper. Star anise, and this is nice. The lemon is nice addition. So lemon, cinnamon, pepper, and anise. That's what I get off of the top. It's very different. This is very different. I can clearly understand why people aren't uh, into this one. The time is getting stronger, so it's almost coming off like this, uh, uh, almost kind of like rosemary. I'm getting rosemary vibes. Not quite minty, but in that same family. This is nice. It's green. It's uh, It's got this mentholated vibe, not quite minty. The cinnamon is there as well. It kind of keeps it from going too minty. I like this. I like this. It's not bad. It's nothing like, uh, it's not a showstopper. But it's nice. I feel like a lot of people might think that this comes off a little bit too much with the cooking spices. Um, it's literally right now, it's just borderline almost BO, almost. But it just, it's not quite there. It's not quite there yet. Okay, not bad. I'm enjoying this. So it's borderline, it's got a lot of the, the time, the time wormwood and galbanum are very are very concentrated here. You do get a lot of the cinnamon as well, but it's kind of in the background. The lemon was there. It's it's pretty much gone now. Thyme is very strong here. Thyme, cinnamon, star anise. So that's what I'm getting. So right now, borderline cooking, but not quite. Let's see what it does when it starts to dry down. Hopefully this one will get a little bit more resinous. Actually, as a bonus, you know what? I'll just crack this one open today too. This is Amouage. It's called, which one is this one? This is Bracken Man. So when I looked at Bracken Man, I love the note of like clove, uh, lavender, and combinations, right? Because when I used to, actually when I studied for my medical program, I used to have my own concoctions of like essential oils and, and I would just make my own waxes. Uh, and what I would do is, is mix a lot of the times I'd do like clove, I'd do lavender, I'd put some kind of sweet bases in there. So essentially like perfumery, but I would put them in like a wax. And whenever I'd study, I'd just light them up and I'd do like little combinations. So clove and lavender were like my favorite uh, you know, relaxation slash getting studying, you know, going because uh, clove almost has like a menthol feel almost, especially when you use higher doses. And then in combination with the, the comforting lavender really put me at ease and allowed me to study better. And then sometimes I would do like a uh, spearmint or like I would do one that I really loved doing was a combination of, especially for studying, it would like lighten me up a little bit is uh, eucalyptus in low doses. I would add some vanilla and rosemary. And that was like, opens your sinuses and I was ready to study. So, okay, Lily Pure. So far, if I'm being honest, this reminds me of an Arabic tea called Meramiya, which is sage. This reminds me of a sage tea, concentrated sage tea. Although there is no sage in the notes, this is what it's reminding me of with cinnamon, with a little bit of cinnamon. That's exactly what this is reminding me of. So it's it's bitter tea. It's not really uh, sweet or anything like that. That's what I'm getting with Lily Pure. All right. 
So let me catch up with some people. What's going on, Key Sense? Thanks for tuning in, bro. From Cincinnati, my neighbor, bro. Man, Daniel, I'm sure you guys heard about the uh, Michigan State shooting. The world is, world is going crazy, man. It's absolutely crazy. Stufville, Stufville Fraghead from Canada is wearing our Moff Club Dana Wee EDP Special Edition. Okay, there you go. Um, that's probably the best one. I was talking to someone who was asking for my advice regarding which are Moff to grab. Have I heard of the Ruby Edition? It's being hyped there in the Philippines. Is that the Baccarat Rouge 540? Uh, I think it might be. No, that's Rouge Edition. This is Ruby. I have not gotten that one, Tom. I'm sorry. Let's talk about the Fragrance World Ebony Fume. I did the video already. It is thebomb.com. Literally. It's amazing. Paris Corner Killer Oud Midnight Ecstasy is Tiziana Terenzi Ecstasy. I haven't checked it out, but you know I probably will. Isn't that a clone of Valentino Womo Noir Absolu? Which fragrance? Are you talking about Midnight Ecstasy? Oh, no, not really. Not really. It's a combination. There are some. Noir Absolu is so sexy. So sexy. I'm so disappointed that they discontinued that fragrance. And the reason why I'm picking up YSL 6th place um, is because of that uh, some people are comparing it to that fragrance. I'm, I'm ready to get that one. So that's definitely going to be probably one of my next pickups. Ursa. Ursa is good. I think that one smells like the... Uh, is that the one that smells like Creed Aventus? People are comparing it to Creed Aventus, a more refined version. Let's find out. Ursa. Ursa, Ursa. I did see it. It's the white bottle. Yep, white bottle. I think... Maybe I'm not thinking about the right one. Probably not. No, it doesn't look like... Oh, this one's straight to heaven. Smells like straight to heaven. Okay. Which one is the one? I Whatever. Okay. Yeah, this one doesn't look too bad. I think I might have smelled it in stores. The You know what I noticed is dried fruits and rum is a combination that's used a lot in niche fragrances. And at first, it comes off a little rotten. But when you let these types of notes dry down, it's freaking amazing, especially when it's combined with these dry type of notes. Um, almost gives you like a sweet molasses sweetness from the fruits, the dried fruits. Let's move on to the next fragrance, y'all. This one is called Ludano Nero. So let's see. Lu and you know, it's funny that I am not going to lie to you guys. Like uh, two months ago, I was I was pooping on Tiziana Terenzi, which un unjustfully so, honestly. There's a lot of fragrances that they have that are nice. Okay, so this one's got Cognac Tobacco Ash. Definitely sticks out. Uh, sandalwood slate also sticks out rosemary we see we have some some uh common trends here we've got another one with the wormwood i'm curious to see what this one scored 4.09 so that's something i look at for sure and then let's scroll down and see what people are comparing it to and they're comparing it to tobacco oud oh i know i'm gonna love this and black blend afghano or black afghano i'm going to love this one all right, so let's see. A lot of people, I remember, were saying that it was a stronger version. Let me... How can I... Okay, here we go. So let's take a look. This is the box. I like that they have, like, this plaque of wood. It's a very thin wood that's engraved with the actual text. On the top, you see they have that TE. It's on all their boxes. Tiziana Terenzi on the back. We've got that right out there on the bottom you see we have the barcode and all that good stuff these are all like straight day parfums this one comes with two pamphlets and i wonder why are they all actually i don't know if they are yes they are this is a part of a different series i'm thinking and that's why i got this box yes so let's see two pamphlets one just describes the current fragrance and the other one is the same thing as the other one that we saw this is a very nice looking bottle same thing with the travel cap. So you got a travel cap if you can't take it, even though, I mean, the whole thing is big. So if you're going to take it off, but take a look at that. I like it. Nice, sleek, uh, symmetric. I love symmetri symmetry. So that um, that's what I'm all about, especially when it comes to like design, decor, all that stuff. Take it off. And we have those details on the atomizer. Nice engravings there. What does it say? Does it say anything specific? This might be, yes, this is their logo that's just engraved on the entire collar. Okay, let's check it out. 
Phoenix, I'm assuming you own uh, Ludano, Nero. Let's see. All right, here we go. Okay. Uh, Lily Pure is kind of in the same, still the same, a little bit, a little bit darker. Let's see. So here we go. Ludano or Laudano. La I'm sorry if I'm butchering the name. All right. Ooh, I like this right off the bat. I like this right off the bat. This smells Middle Eastern. Oh, this is nice. This is nice. I am definitely reminded of uh, Black Afghano right away. Oh, this is a funkier Black Afghano. I like this. This is a win for me. You have to like these two fragrances. Yes. Yes, this is a win. This is like tobacco oud, but definitely denser on the cognac and... And oud? Do I even want to say oud? This is smells a lot like a blend of both of those because as it's drying, I'm getting more tobacco oud. I like this. I really do like this. Great. That's success. Ludano Nero. Awesome. So what am I really getting mostly? Well, I mean, oud. Definitely oud right off the bat. Tobacco and ash. Surprisingly enough, I do get some ash. And when I think of ash, I'm thinking of like charcoal. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Just like carbon smells. Um, slate. Oddly enough. Yeah, man. If you've ever smelled like uh, freshly broken bricks or bricks, if you ever like, uh, I was a kid, man. We used to bite bricks. That's kind of what it smells like. Um, I'm not really getting too much. Actually, I am getting honey. I am getting honey, not much warm, wormwood, not much myrtle, iris, maybe not much uh, oak. I do. I do pick up oak significant amount, but mostly, mostly, if I have to say, I'll probably sum it up to the oud, incense, ash, honey, tobacco, cognac, and some slate. It's a really nice fragrance. Really nice fragrance. Opened up like a lot of uh, black Afghano. And now it's blended with uh, tobacco oud. But man, this is different. Very nice. All right, let's move on. That, that was a successful. Definitely, I'm loving this one. Very niche. Very niche. You have to like skanky fragrances for that one. Please don't go buy it thinking that people are going to tell you smell good because they probably won't. Let's catch up. All right. Um, please get my, name, my nose on Ursa. I'm going to have to now. Two suggestions. I'll get it. Or that was one, I think. Right. Good morning from Dubai. Ahlan sahlan, Dina. And thank you for tuning in. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hopefully, we'll see more of you. This late night stream, I, I don't really limit the times I do my streams. If I have extra time, I'm just going to get up and do it because I recognize that there's going to be people in like maybe Saudi or Yemen or Dubai that are probably going to be watching or Pakistan, wherever you are. So it is what it is. It's all good. And plus, you're recorded. You guys can watch this back. Personally, I don't know about you guys, but I have some of my, my favorite channels. For example, um, I watch Bobby Lee. If you guys have ever watched Mad TV or Saturday Night Live, he's got a podcast. Um, what is it called? Bad Friends is really good. And then his specific podcast is really nice, too. When I'm at work, man, I'm just listening to podcasts, whether it's fragrances and stuff. And so I don't really care. Like I, Sometimes I'll even you know listen back to some of mine just to see how, you know, did I mess up? Could I improve? Can I? So I enjoy it. I really do. Have I tried Intense Cedrat Boise? And is it better than the original? Honestly, Eugene, no, because I don't like to buy into hype. I'm just being honest, man. And that whole uh, uh, pineapple Okmos DNA, I personally love Hashibat. I think they do it the best. But the only problem with Hashibat, on me, it didn't last much. So if I'm going to buy anything of that nature, it's going to be Hashibat way before I buy anything from Mansara. Uh, so, yeah, I'm sorry if that disappoints. Let's see what else. What else? How can I unsay? What is all this? Oh, I don't know. Whatever. Okay. Um. Let's see. Hello from Florida. Have you tried any mind games? I have. When they first released, they have some good fragrances, man. But I'm going to tell you, dude, before you buy, test it at least twice. Because I was so underwhelmed by their performance. I was so underwhelmed. And I didn't realize how bad the performance was. I'm not going to speak for all their fragrances. I'm just talking about at least the ones that I sampled. I paid $345, man. 
$345 and I barely got three hours from a fragrance. No way. And then um, I'm not going to lie. I was very, very in love with one of their fragrances. I reached out to kind of like, you know, just thank them and introduce myself and stuff like that. And uh, they're a new brand. So it is what it is. And they also own the website Avant, A-V-A-N-T. And I never got a response, man. I, I wasn't even like asking for anything. I was just saying, you know, like uh, very interested and blah, 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 whatever. Anyway, um, let's see. Next week, I'm putting samples of Arabian Oud D1. Oh, nice. I still have to unbox those Arabian Oud fragrances. What made you decide to give them a try? I just saw them for a good deal. I saw them for a good deal. And um, that exact day, I was at Neiman's. And I revisited them because of uh, previous negativity I had towards them. I was like, you know what? Let me see. And I really like the way that these look. Honestly, if I'm being honest, the way they look. And I wanted them on the shelf. <laughs> So when I smelled them, I was a little bit more open-minded with smelling them. And a couple of them I honestly fell in love with. So that's really what did it for me. Fragrance by Dossier had awesome prices on them. So it is what it is. Black Anubis from Sphinx Fragrances. Wow. Wow. I have to say I did a first impression video. You guys can go back and look at it. And I was that is such an underwhelming experience that I had with the, uh, with the unboxing. But I'm going back to it. And that between you and me, guys, well, it's not really between you and me. There's 43 watchers, viewers. You better be leaving those likes. That's becoming a signature signature scent for me. I am in love with Black Anubis, and I was not expecting it, and I'm not joking. What I get from Black Anubis is kind of a, a similar vibes to, I don't want to say Baccarat Rouge, but there is that Baccarat feeling with leather. Imagine Baccarat with oud and leather. It's so sexy, man. So sexy. A black leather Baccarat Rouge. I love it. It's very unique. So I'm not trying to say that it smells like Baccarat. It does not, but it is, it's unique. It's really, really nice. Kevin Hill, what's up, man? Yo, you guys, all I smell right now is this. Um, which one is it? Ludano Nero. So let's move on to the next one. This next fragrance is going to be Al Contrario. And this is supposed to be their like gourmand almost. So let's see, Contrario. And this one is a smaller version. And as you can tell, it's a little upside down. And when I first picked it up, I was like, wait a minute, what the heck? So same thing, no difference with the presentation, guys. Same thing, except this is a smaller bottle. And because it's a smaller bottle, same pamphlets, the cap is actually the opposite. So as you can see, let me show you guys for a better visual if i can find it come on damn all right so wait a minute what happened oh no did we freeze Seriously? I don't know if you guys can hear me, but it seems like we froze. No, come on. Hmm. What a shame. Hopefully this will reconnect. If not, then I don't know if I'm going to wrap it up or start over. How did this?
Okay, I have no idea what happened, but we're back. I think we're back. <laughs> Technology, man. You don't always win. Uh, can somebody confirm whether or not we're still here? Can hear you just fine still. You guys might have been able to hear me, but on my end, it was frozen completely. So let me know if we're back. Cool. Anybody, can anybody confirm we're back? Okay, awesome. All right, sorry for that disruption, guys. It was frozen completely. I don't know what the heck happened. Anyways, all right, so back to El Contrario. I love the way that this one looks. Open it up, and then I abs I cannot stand having small juice bottles. I like having a lot, but that's just me being greedy. So just because it looks a little weird, but at least they make it up with the cap, right? So El Contrario, very cute cap, very nice cap. Classy, very classy. Let's see. Let's check out the notes. I got to share the screen again. Let's share the screen. And allow. There we go. All right. Let's see. What do we have here? So 4.15. This is one that's actually really, really enjoyed. And I mean, guys, take a look for yourself. These are notes that just look delicious, right? We got cacao pod, malt, ebony wood. So it's like a, a, a cacao beer already, I guess. Vanilla, tonka bean, orchid, hazelnut. I'm, just, I'm melting already. And sandalwood and benzoin and, and sugar cane. So let's see what's up. So far, Lily Pure has gotten stronger in the tonka and cinnamon but the star anise and the pepper and thyme are still there and they're making it very borderline very borderline bo i don't want to say that it smells bo but it smells a lot like maramia for those of you for those middle eastern people that know what maramia sage tea it smells a lot like sage tea with uh i don't want to say honey with just cinnamon sage tea and cinnamon that's really what it smells like Okay. And then Ludano Nero got better, got better, got sweeter. It got sweeter. I love Ludano Nero. Ludano Nero reminds me of like, you're in a long coat, you're dressed the F up seriously in maybe black. And you're just, you're, you're just going to slay. Literally. That's what Ludano Nero is. It is niche AF oud. Very niche. You got to be careful with that one. It's not going to be for everybody. Same vibes I get with tobacco oud from Tom Ford. All right, here we go. And I love that fragrance, which is now sadly discontinued. But I think if you pick up Ludano Nero and you didn't pick up tobacco oud, you'll be happy. You'll be happy. All right. El Contrario. Let's see what up. Oh, okay. Right off the top, a little feminine. But damn, that's good. Damn, that's good. What did I get right away? I got a lot of vanilla and sugar. More than anything, vanilla and sugar and orchid. That's why it was a little feminine. Still kind of feminine. Still kind of feminine. The orchid here. This is reminding me a bit of the Billie Eilish. Eilish? A little bit. Hopefully it changes a little. And I, I can see that it's getting a bit darker. Although it's not as dark as you would think it is, considering the fact that there's that ebony wood and cacao pod at the top, it is getting darker. Thank God. Thank God. The resins are starting to come in. Nice. Nice. This is starting to get warmer. Warmer, less feminine, but in that opening, definitely was way more feminine than I would like. Almost like a uh, vanilla, vanilla lotion. I almost smelled like a vanilla lotion. So let's see what this gets compared to. Tribeca. I can see that. I can see that. Although I think Tribeca has saffron. It's closer to Baccarat. This smells like a less synthetic uh, family of that. Uh, more gourmand Baccarat family. Less saffron. What else? What else? What is this one? So New York. I've never smelled that one. Yeah, this is, this is a bit feminine, man. This is a bit feminine. So as you can see here... Um, you can still rock it. If you liked fragrances like the Billie Eilish, Eilish or if you like Zerzhoff's Italica, Lyra, that family, that's what this is in. Very nice. Very nice. The more it dries down, the more I'm enjoying this one. The opening was a bit too femme for me. But let's, let's let it sit. I'm going to let that one sit. I like it so far. There hasn't been one that I don't like at all. Like I like all of these, honestly. 
All right, let me catch back up and let's see what everybody's saying. I love Sedrat Boise, so I'm worried about the quality of the clone. I have that clone. Um, I just haven't opened it. I know um, Ross from TLTG has it. He said it's very nice. Very nice. Bright Peach by Latafa is delicious. It is. You got to be careful when you're applying that one, though. It can be cloying if you like overspray. Um, Spirits Fiorentino is... Yeah, I can't... I saw that on uh, my... Who was it? I don't remember who it was, but I'm baccaratted out, man. I'm baccaratted out. So anything that has like a heavy dose of like amber and saffron, which is what gives baccarat that that heavy, you know, feeling that I really get sick of, I get sick of really quick. So Sphinx fragrances, their black anabas, the fact that it has a similar vibe, but I'm still loving it. I'm surprised, honestly. I am surprised, but really nice fragrance. All right, let's see what else. Back on track. Cool, cool. Replica by the fireplace. It's on the way. Armani Intensely. I have it. Um, all right. So let's move on to the last Tiziana Terenzi fragrance. And then we'll go into that Amouage Bracken Man. Which I'm excited for. So this is called Maremma or Maremma. I would, I would call it Maremma. I don't know if that's how they pronounce it. Same thing. No need to go through that whole thing again. And excuse me. Oh, okay. All right. Nothing different either. And let's see. Maremma. Maremma. Woody sweet, amber spicy, cacao patchouli, powdery honey, oud, and fruity. Cool. What is this one getting? It gets a 4.02. All right. Oak, black currant, ylang ylang, jasmine, bergamot. That opening does not sound good at all. Cumin. Ew. God, what was I? I don't know. I got myself to get it, I guess. Cool. Let's see what it gets compared to. We have some notes that I do enjoy. I don't enjoy uh, the cumin. That's about the only one that I really don't enjoy. So everything else is decent. I love rosewood and fragrances. So let's see. What does it get? Okay, black orchid. So it's going to be one of those. And it's okay. Let's see. I'm going to decide on my own. So the last spot we've got on the bicep. Let's see. So far, all these fragrances are, I'm enjoying them. Okay, I can smell it already. And I did get like a black orchid. Ooh. Ooh, what did I just get a blast of? kind of stinky not not like uh stinks but it's kind of like it's got that funk you know ylang ylang it's it's got oud but it's like sour oud it's very similar to black orchid very similar too similar honestly too similar hmm i'm not crazy about this one doesn't smell bad it doesn't smell bad but that's really all i can say about it, it smells like black orchid but more sour, more sour. I'm gonna let it dry down. I'm gonna let it dry down. I don't wanna, I don't wanna um, bash on it before I see what it actually is doing. So let's let it dry down and we'll come back to, let's go back to Lily Pure. So Lily Pure, we were talking about, has that Angelica, has that uh, cinnamon. It's got a weird combination uh, Angelica, cinnamon, lemon, the Sichuan pepper. It's got that honey. It's got, uh, no, it doesn't have the honey. It has the thyme. This is the one with the galbanum birch. Okay, let's see. Here we go. Is it the same as what I got? Much different. You know what I'm smelling now is close to Gucci Per Om 2. It has that pencil shavings vibe. This is interesting. This is very, very interesting. It's got that tea vibe. Um, so this is how this one opened up. Is very transitional. And this is why it's so important to actually wear the fragrance and not judge it off the opening because it's completely different, completely. The opening was a heavy blast of like star anise, lemon, cinnamon, pepper. And then as it, as it got into the mid, I got a lot more of the thyme. I got a lot more of the thyme, almost smelled like that rosemary, had a mentholated vibe. And as it started getting to the base, the tonka was starting to show up. But it was still maintaining that uh, Sichuan pepper and thyme and galbanum. So it started almost borderline BO. 
didn't quite get there. Did not quite get there. I started getting sage vibes, sage tea with cinnamon, right? That was the mental image I was drawing. And now as it's drying down, a lot of that star anise lemon is faded. And so now it's like herbal and spicy at the same time. And it's way more suited for the DNA. It's not like pulling you in uh, different directions anymore. And it's drying down into like this tobacco, tobacco, tonka, cedar, but it still has that bite from that thyme and galbanum. Definitely still there. This could probably still change again in the, in the later dry down, just because I'm not really getting too much of the benzoin yet. Birch is, it's there, but it's nothing. It's, it's, it is there. So that's what I'm getting as well. This is different. This is very different. That's the summary of this whole thing. It's not going to be for everybody. It's not going to be for everybody. I'm getting pencil shaving vibes. I was getting like all kinds of different vibes, really. So that's what I think about Lilipure so far. Very unique. Where would I wear this, though? This is what I'm thinking about. Honestly, this screams like fall rainy day fall i mean if you think about it that's essentially like the whole herbal spicy almost dry woods uh type of vibe that i'm getting with this one and let's see amber aromatic yeah aromatic fresh spicy woody that's exactly what i'm getting man so it is probably going to get more ambery too it is getting warmer so cool so far i like this one i do like this one so all right, the next one I'm going to smell is the other one I sprayed on my left bicep, which is, which one? The Laudano Nero. Let's see. This one I enjoyed a lot. Off the top, we'll talk about it when I get it open. Here we go. Okay. Woody Amber, spicy or smoky, I mean. All right, so when I first sprayed this on, first thing I remember smelling, black Afghano right away. I was like, black Afghano. And as it started to dry down, I started getting a little bit more tobacco oud. And now let's see where we're at. I did get this ash vibe and slate for sure. It's very unique. This is really nice. This is really nice. You have to have to like barnyard oud. You have to. I do. I do. I'm being honest. I do. You have to like Tom Ford's tobacco oud. This is like Tom Ford's tobacco oud modernized, honestly. This is, oh, I like this. I like this a lot. I'm so glad I picked this one up. This is definitely an oud connoisseur fragrance that's into uh, funky, tobacco, boozy, very boozy oud uh, and tobacco. Super nice, super nice with that charcoal vibe as well. There's definitely a charcoal vibe that's coming from this combination of the slate and the ash. Heavy incense. You're going to get the woodiness from the oak uh camphor so maybe this is sure i do get some some uh reminiscence of like uh whatever the heck l'oreal is you know or laurels <laughs> let's see what what laurels is the camphor uh aromatic camphorous that's what i was thinking so the camphor it is a little bit camphorous but i was thinking that that's mostly attributed to the incense you know making giving it like this uh smoky quality but i guess camphor is also Let's see. White crystals that smell like mothballs. Oh, shit. I shouldn't have read this. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I still like it. I don't care. I'm going to put that aside. Who cares? You know, uh, does it smell good overall? The composition? I love it. It's a very nice niche oud. Let's move on to the next one. Next one is Al Contrario. This is the, um, what's it called? Gourmand. So Al Contrario. And it sucks because a lot of the reviews for Al Contrario are very, um, I think they're done in Spanish, most of the, the reviews, because I was watching this one as I was trying to pick it up. Yeah, I watch reviews too. Why not, right? Um, okay, so let's see what I get. This is a very smooth, um, the orchid is contributing heavy, um, waxy powder. It's not just powdery, it's waxy. So it's waxy and powdery. Sugar, vanilla, cacao, cream, really. I mean, I'm not really getting too much hazelnut, nor ebony wood. I mean, it is dark, but I'm not really getting too much ebony wood. Kind of just skipped through. The opening was mostly the orchid. Orchid is the shine, is the star here. Orchid is definitely the star. Let's let's see what the orchid is doing. If 
fantasy synthetic floral note. Exactly. Okay, whatever. So it's a powdery, waxy type of floral note. That's it, man. If this is not anything special. If you have a lot of those like Lyra and all that stuff, you're not missing out. You're really not missing out on much. Smells good. Smells nice. Um, unmistakably feminine though. But um, I could still rock this. This is a fun fragrance. Fun vanilla, sugar, cacao, cream fragrance. Nothing special. Nothing special. Still a, not a, a complete loss. Last one is Marema. All right, and this is the one that I said was a little weird with the sourness, and I don't even remember it. Let's see. Oh, this is that black orchid one. It is a much different now, much different. The rosewood combination of like rosewood, angelica, and cumin. It's not really body odor. It's uh, definitely there. It's a softer black orchid. It's still in that same family. Redundant, redundant, period. It's still a bit sour. It is still a bit sour. This is a redundant purchase if you have black orchid. Nothing crazy. So, so far, my favorite one, Ludano Nero. Second, Lily Pure. Uh, third, El Contrario. And fourth was is definitely this one. Um, so far, though, None of them I hate, honestly. None of them I dislike. And then I'm going to check Bracken Man. Bracken Man. Bracken. I'm really upset, though, that I got the tester because I love the cap on this one. Before I get into it, let me catch up with you guys. Let's see what's going on. Sorry, y'all. All right. Um, dum, dum, dum. Any clones for African leather? Yes, there is from Paris Corner. And it's called, I think it's called African Safari. Or African leather. And yes, I have seen Casa Morando 1888. I haven't picked it up yet. Uh, Oud Store is kind of the only one that has it right now. And he's a little overpriced. And I don't condone or I don't support price gouging. So we'll wait. Let's wait until we can get that cheaper for me to like really, you know, review it. What up? What up? Marema is a coast of Italy. Huh. Interesting. So let's see then. That's what the coast smells like. <laughs> I doubt it, but I don't know what the actual inspiration is behind that. All right. Which one do I recommend? Replica by the Fireplace, Armani Intensely, or Ferragamo? Armani, stronger with you, Armani uh, Intensely. You're going to get way more compliments and, and wearability out of that one than all of them and performance. My, my suggestion. Replica by the Fireplace is really nice, but it's very, um, it's not like a, it's more like a cozy fragrance, man. It's a cozy fragrance. I definitely think it's a good one. All right, let's see. West Coast. Da, 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 da. Do I have Royale X? I do have Royale X. I love most of the uh, Zaharoff fragrances. And I actually have Leather Tobacco as well, which I haven't reviewed yet, but I've got some, I, I know exactly what I'm going to say about that fragrance. Let's see. Signature Royale X. I think this is the one that I enjoyed. Um, I love Signature Royale. I do love Signature Royale. But let's see what I think about Royale X. Really nice. It's really nice. Um, the reason why I liked Signature Royale is because it was oriental. It was fresh. It was very versatile. It takes that versatility, adds more resins, I feel like. It kind of dirties it up. So it's not as versatile as uh, the Zaharoff Royale, but it's as good. It's just denser. Mm, smells good. It smells very good. Okay. Let's see. Yes, of course. Mardi, there is Frenetic Delicios from Paris Corner, the Emir line. That is the delicious clone. And then there is the Mason Alhambra Tabac. There is, yeah, those two. I have done an unboxing for the Tabac. I still have not filmed my, I'm working on it actually, the full review. And then I've got another fragrance that has been on the market for a long time that people have not pinpointed what the clones were. 
there's absolutely no information regarding what this is cloning prince of I think this is called Prince of Arabia. And it's really nice. Honestly, it's it's not bad. It's a combination of two fragrances. But I finally pinpointed it. And that fragrance, honestly, this made me so OCD. I'm out like maybe 200 bucks because I purchased fragrances that I thought it smelled like. And then when I got it, I was like, ah, oh, damn it, man. This is not <laughs> this is not that one. I even purchased the old school Lanui de Lome. Uh, which one? Which one? Lanui de Lome. The old school one. I don't remember. I think it was Eau de Parfum or something like that. It was. It didn't have the cardamom. It was just the, the lavender, right? Um, the person that talked about YSL baby cat clones are Paris Corner, Atouf, and Latafa El Noble Amir. I thought El Amir was uh, Rosendo Mateo uh, number five. We'll see. Anyway. Then there's also from Joel says JPG Le Beau, Le Parfum clone is Khalila or Kahila Platinum. Yep. And Paris Corners Tawak is the Marier Premier Flacon. Okay. All right. Yes, Alhambra does have a clone of Kirke, which is Karat. And then there's that confidential gold. I'm not crazy about Kirke. I'm not crazy about it. But um, Karat is really a clone, though. It is a clone of it. I do have Confidential Golden, and that is also a good clone. So let's get into Bracken Man. Bracken Man has notes of, well, let's see what people are rating this first. 4.13, not bad. Clove, like I said, Cypress, Lavender, Nutmeg. You see the rest, y'all. You see the rest. The opening sounds amazing for me. I love Clove. So Oriental Vibes is what I'm assuming this is going to be. By the way, this is a tester. I don't like this. I need the white cap. I need it. <laughs> All right, let's see. I'm going to spray this on, actually. But I have so many fragrances on that I have to test this on a tester. There's no way I'm going to smell this. I've got to test this. Fudge, man. I really wanted to. Ooh, I can smell it already. Let's see. Mm. I like this. I like this. This is hitting home for me. Because we have a tea in Yemen. It's a clove tea. We use clove. Sometimes we'll use condensed milk. Oh, this is good. I'm about to fall asleep smelling this one, yo. <laughs> a bit mentholated. I'm getting the cypress for sure. This is getting compared to. This is nice. This has an old school barber shoppy feel in the background too. Yeah, see comparisons with Fougere Royale. This is from uh, what is this? Hubigant, aren't they? They're the first ones that. Yep, Fougere Royale. That's like the first Fougere fragrance to ever be released. Not this specific one, but they're the ones who did uh, release it. If I'm not mistaken, this is nice. This is an old school. Fougere with a heavy dose of clove at the top. Oriental Fougere. This is my world right here. It isn't easy. Just like this, I, I have to agree with this comment. It's not easy. It's not going to be for everyone. You have to like clove. You have to enjoy like spices, right? So, yes, there is clove, nutmeg, there is patchouli, dirty earthiness, 100%. Dirty earthiness, slightly mentholated clove with your classic barbershop fougere in the background. I love this. Mm, I love this. I love this. This is really nice. That's it. Lavender. You've got the lavender. You've got uh, patchouli. Some of my favorite notes, cinnamon, sandalwood, clove, cypress. Um, yeah, that's the combination I used to do. Uh, clove, cypress, and lavender was amazing. Sometimes sandalwood, even, uh, cedar. I used to have, uh, cedar oil as well. Uh, I even, uh, I would do like the waxes and then I would also do the, uh, what is it called? The mist, the humidifiers, whatever it's called. The essential oil mist. You put it in the little, I forgot what it's called. It's been a couple of years since I've done that. Okay. We're going to stop sharing this screen. Um, so far. Joel, yes, it is the Alamir, Al, Al Noble Alamir from Latafa is Rosendo Mateo number five. Uh, but it also smells like baby cat. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's a nice ambery fragrance then. Nice ambery vanilla fragrance. 
The Emoage was a tester, guys. I picked this all up on, um, where did I pick these up? Fragrancebuy.ca. This one, I think, came in another haul from, it was a Gift Express. Gift Express. There's a few haul videos that I need to do, and that's why I wanted to get this one out of the way. So this has been fun. This has been really fun. I love this. Black Orchid, not bad. El Contrario, not bad either. Got sweeter, got sweeter. Um, Lily Pure. More pencil shavings, more time, more galbanum. And um, we have L L Laudano Nero. I love it. I love it. If you like Black Afghano, this is uh, Black Afghano in a, in a suit. So it's Black Afghano matured up. So really, really nice. And let's see what Bracken Man. Bracken Man is my favorite of all of these. Laudano, Bracken Man, and then the rest. And as far as Signature Royale, since somebody brought that up from Zaharoff, very nice. And yes, thank you, Ch Chandra. I appreciate it. <laughs> Diffuser. I'm sorry, guys. I worked three 12s. I have one day off, and then I have three more 12s. So I just finished meal prepping. I know how to cook too. So I don't only smell good, but I know how to cook. I made some, uh, what did I make? I made Thai chicken, Thai style chicken. So I did, um, here's a recipe for you guys. Take a quarter cup of brown sugar, uh, another quarter cup of oyster sauce, another quarter cup of, I like low sodium because you get enough sodium. Take some chili pepper flakes, some garlic powder per eye. You know, you can eye it. Uh, garlic powder, onion powder, Mix that all up and you have a marinade. Take chicken thighs. I love chicken thighs. I cannot stand chicken breasts after so many years of just eating just dry chicken breasts. Chicken thighs are equally as good, especially if you get them skinned and boneless. Cost a little bit more, but you get what you pay for it. Dark meat. And then marinate it. Throw it on the skillet. Low, 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 low to medium, whatever. And I make salads with that. So that's what this is. this week's meal prep consists of. So... Yeah, between cooking and work and all that, y'all, I'm just, I'm tapping out, man. I'm tapping out. Lisa, it is so damn good. I legit ate a piece and I was like, Panda Express, what? It literally tasted just like Panda Express, the bourbon chicken. So damn good. And if you really like sweet meats or sweet meals, put half a cup of brown sugar rather than... Um, quarter cup. And it's healthy because if you think about it, I used, how many pieces did I use? I put about three thighs per day and I did three days. So three, six, nine, and then I had two extra 10, 11. So 11 thighs that was, you know, just all that marinade was used for 11 thighs. So you get maybe like what, 40 calories for that entire marinade. It's nothing. And then I buy the uh, PF Chang's, uh, their vinaigrette Asian dressing. So damn good. And if you really want to spice it up, chop up some almonds and saute it in with your chicken. While you're doing that marinade, chop up some almonds or cashews and let that marinate as well if you want to get some extra uh, nuts in there. But yeah, I love cooking too, by the way. Cooking is my thing. Had Thai chicken soup for dinner. That's what's up. I was going to pick up uh, drunken noodles from this faux Thai place next to my crib. Uh, really good food. I love it. I went to P.F. Chang's last week. I got the lettuce wraps and I got their Asian chicken salad. And I'm addicted to that Asian chicken salad, even from Cheesecake Factory. Because you legit get like a bowl this big and it's like 400 calories, but the volume is so high. Volume is how you really keep yourself uh, low. And then, um, yeah, man. Yeah. So pretty good day. When am I going to drop the Tux comparison? That's tomorrow. Tomorrow it's dropping. Or is it today? Tomorrow. Tomorrow it's dropping. And then I got Mustache EDP that I still need to review. And then after that, it's the Clone War battle. So. You're going to see all five of them doing top five clones for that. And then I'm going to start working on the uh, either Carlisle or Layton next. So that's kind of like my little my little trademark or whatever it is, these Clone Wars. I'm going to do one fragrance at a time. So we've got the Tux. We then have Layton on the to-do list. And then we have a couple of them, honestly, man. Carlisle, I've got Naxos is going to be one of those. Um and then La Nuit de Lome is going to be one of those. And I know some of these are older fragrances like La Nuit de Lome, but there's a lot of factors that's going to be going into like the scoring system. Which one is the best clone, the closest clone, the strongest clone, all that stuff, right? So it's, I think it's going to be very useful. 
So if you didn't already, leave a like. And if you're not subscribed, make sure to subscribe, man. It's free. You just click and it's done. And then it supports this channel. And I can pick up a bunch more of uh, these, these dupes and clones. And I'll let you guys know. I mean, uh, it is what it is. But I have a couple of other ones that are going to be filmed. This is ready to film. This is such a good clone for Blue Day Chanel EDP. And then I've got the Just Jack Almafi Coast Mandarino D Almafi. Awesome. Very good. Um, but it's a freshie as far as the performance goes. So expect a performance uh, to be like that. And then we've got Tabac from Mason Alhambra and Sammy Andras Missy 3.0, which is his Tobacco Lore clone. I like this one a little bit more. It's not as cloying, honestly. Mystery 3.0. And then I'm going to pinpoint for you guys exactly what this is a clone of. I wish there was more time in the day so I could get all these done. But, you know, realistic, I have to be realistic. So I'm pacing myself with posting videos every other day. I would love to do every day, but I love my job and they need me. And uh, the medical field is where my heart is. So I'll always do that. This I love as well. So I'll always do this, but 50-50, right? And then we have this Aqua Crystal, which is such a good clone for whatever it's duping. Universalis. And then um, the full review for this, which is awesome. I've already made two list videos, y'all. It's just uh, scheduled to post two list videos. Interesting topics. Making sense. Michael Densmore has sent over this nice care package. And I wore one of them. I wore his black phantom clone on Valentine's Day. I love it. I love it. So, um, But I did spray like legit 30 times. So keep that between us. <laughs> yeah. That's it, man. So I love everything that I smelled today. Tiziana Terenzi has redeemed itself in my books, although it's never really been in a position to redeem itself. It's always been pretty damn good. I just uh, came back around and really gave them a real shot. So, so far, I really like these. And for the price that I got them, I think it's worth it. Even the ones that I'm not crazy about. The Black Orchid is awesome. El Contrario smells good. It, it, it's serving its purpose, you know, like it's sweet, it's sugar, it's vanilla. It's, uh, it has that uh, orchid for sure. Pencil shaving smells good. Smells really good. It's a nostalgic type of fragrance for sure. This is nostalgia. This reminds me of Bentley Black uh, Intense or Be Bentley, Bentley for Men Absolute. Niched out though. Much better quality. You can't compare the quality. That's what this reminds me of. In the dry down, in the dry down, in the opening, it's completely different. The transitions on these fragrances is insane. That's one thing I will say. And Laudano Nero is still so good, so good. And uh, last sniff, man, last <laughs> sniff. Bracken is freaking Bracken. This is awesome. This is awesome, man. That's it. That is all I have to say today, y'all. That's been... Four Tiziana Terenzi fragrances, a bonus Emelash fragrance. Told you guys what's coming up very soon. And this, I think I've pinpointed what it's duping. Really good fragrance. So stay tuned. Tomorrow is going to be another release of the Mason Alhambra Tuxedo. Is it really the best one? Is it the worst one? Is it? How does it stack up against the other four fragrances? And yeah, if you're not subscribed, do so. Thank you all for watching, and until next time, peace. Love you guys, man. Peace out, man. Have an awesome weekend, and thank you for making mine exactly that.